Hi, this is problem 3.3. We're working here in chapter number three of our book, and this is the equilibrium of particles. In this problem, the mass of the lamp is eight kilograms, as you see, and um, as you see in the, in the geometry, this lamp is held by a tension of this cord, right, by this cord, and by a spring, which is creates also a force. And they are asking us to find the required length of this cord to hold the lamp in equilibrium. So what do we do? The first thing that we always do is that draw our free body diagram. So let's do our free body diagram of this point over here, which is point A. And as you see in this free body diagram, we will have an active force, which is the weight. Let me draw this in. This is the weight of the lamp. And it's an active force, which we know the value, because it's the mass times the gravity. And we will multiply those two values, give me a force. And the force is in newtons. Then we have to react the forces do by the different supports that we have to hold that lamp, right? So that supports are this tension over here, which, which I call it tension AC. And then we have a tension, but I will call it force because it's a spring force. So I will call it f force AB, and this is a spring force. Good, so we would like to find those two forces in order to, we have the total length. So if we are able to find the length of the spring, we will be able to subtract that whole length to the length of the spring, and that's what I'm going to do. So the first step all was to draw the free body diagram. The second step is to do the equations of equilibrium. And to do that, I, I always have to have my coordinate system that I will use, right? In this case, it will be x and y. So I will add forces in x, and they will be equal to 0 because we are in equilibrium. What forces do we have in x? We have this angle over here, which is 30 degrees. Therefore, we have that the force of the spring, right, minus the tension AC. And as you see, that tension is not in the x direction, but it has a component in the x direction, which is this one right here, which will be the tension times the cosine because it's the adjacent side, right? So cosine of 30. And the weight doesn't contribute to the x direction because it's only in the y direction. This is equals to 0. And then I add forces in the y direction, is equals to 0, and that gives me the following equation. That gave me this component now in the adjacent. This is the adjacent was in x. The opposite is in y. So it will be the AC sine of 30 minus the weight. And this force of the spring does not contribute to the y direction because it's only is along the x direction. So this is equals to 0. So from here, since we know the weight, from here, we can get the tension of the cord, which I already calculated, which is 157 newtons. And once we have that, we can plug it into here, right? And then we have the force of the spring. And the force of the spring is equals 135.9 newtons. So we were able to find those two forces, the tension of the cord and the force of the spring. What do we do with that? We know that the force of the spring is equal to the constant of the spring times S. And what is S? S, well, actually, this is not capital S. It should be lower S. So let me write it like that. And what is SAB? So that will be the 
final length of the spring minus the initial length of the spring. And we are told that the initial length of the spring, which is the initial length, is 0 0.4 meters. So that's the unstretch length of the spring. So if we take the spring and we don't do anything to it, it has 0 0.4. As, long, as soon as I apply a force, the spring is stretched. And that's this length over here. Okay, so since we have this force and we have K, which is given, we can find SAB, which is the force of the spring divided by K. We already know that this force is 135.9, and we divide it by 300, and I get a value of 0 0.4. 53 meters. So, this is what I have stretched the spring from its own stretch position to the final length. So, the final length is what I want to find, right? And I know SAB is equal to LF minus L0. So, therefore, I want to find this final length of the spring, therefore I can write that the final length of the spring will be SAB plus L0. So that's 0 0.453 plus 0 0.4. So my final length is 0 0.853 meters. So. I was able to find this length over here, which is 0 0.853 meters. So now I'm able to find this length over here, right? This length over here will be 2 meters minus 0 0.853. So the length, the length of CL, of course, this is, will be this times cosine of 30 will be equals to 2 meters minus 0 0.853 meters. Therefore, LCD will be equals to this value over here divided by cosine of 30, and we know that cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2, right? You can do it also with your calculator. Finally, oh, this is not C, uh, this is A, A, let me get it, the, this is AC, 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 AC will be equals to, I have it at here, 1.32, Okay, so just as I recall, what did we do first? We did the free body diagram, it's always the first step. We did the equations of equilibrium, and we were able to find the force of the spring and the tension of the rope. With the force of the spring, we were able to find the difference between the final length and the initial length. But since we, are, we care about the final length in order to compare that to the two meters, we found the final length of the spring found this distance, and with this distance, which is the component in x direction of this tension of this uh, rope, right, we were able to find the length of that rope. And this is the solution of this problem.